comes to handling, these guys are actually probably one of the best arachnids on the market that you can get to handle. They're almost completely harmless when it comes to humans. They have no stinger and they don't have any like pinchers or fangs really you gotta worry about. They have these reptoral claws in front of their mouth area up here that they eat their prey with and then they just have these petty pulps right here that they use for grabbing prey items. Um, which is really awesome. They're non-venomous. They are just an all-around great beginner arachnid. I think a really underestimated arachnid for beginners that you just don't hear about that often. Now, as you can see, how they find their prey is they use these little whip-like antennas on their body and they feel around in the dark. Now, they're predators of the night, so they do all their hunting at night and they kind of just scuttle along feeling around with those antenna for whenever they can come across a prey item and then they'll just grip it with these petty pulps here. So one interesting way actually so you can tell a male from a female when it comes to these guys is see their petty pulps here that we were talking about and where the elbow ends. Now if the elbow here is shorter than the elbow of their first front leg that means you got a female. So if the petty pulp extends past that first leg, then you have a male. You can see here, she's actually missing part of a leg. Um, that happened either in the wild, if she was wild caught, or it happened at one of the pet shops where she was kept. So they are arachnids, so they will be molting and they do regenerate limbs. So I'm going to keep you guys up to date with the progress of this and hopefully we'll see a fully functional leg within a couple molts. So as a classification, she is an arachnid, but she is neither a scorpion or a tarantula. They actually fall in their own little category. See how they kind of do that side scuttle. Yep, just like that. And they'll walk sideways like a crab. So I really recommend this for any beginner that's getting into arachnids and you're not quite sure whether you want to get a scorpion or if you're looking into getting a tarantula, um, if you're worried about bites, anything like that, this is most definitely a safe bet for you. Now when it comes to housing, I keep my tail whip scorpion in one of these about five gallon Sterilite tubs. I've also seen people use these medium size Exoterra enclosures, they work fine also. Uh, you really just want some sort of substrate. Cocoa fiber works great, uh, helps keep in the humidity. Anything like sphagnum moss, things like that, that help with humidity. I keep a water dish in mine. Um, the main thing is really the cork bark, which you can pick up at just about any pet shop. As you can see, they have a really low profile. They like to hide behind cork bark, usually in tight spaces. In the wild, they'll hide in trees or on trees up against the bark or underneath rocks. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to housing. These antennae like whips that come off that they use to feel around for prey items, they actually can use these as a sense of taste and smell, picking up uh, chemicals and other things like that. Now this in particular species is found in Tanzania, which gives it its name, the Tanzanian tailless whip scorpion. Their scientific name is Daman diamadema, which means the demon's crown. Now when it comes to feeding, I pretty much stick with crickets. Um, when they're really small, if you end up with some baby tailless whip scorpions, I guess I've heard they eat fruit flies, things like that. I'm really not a huge fan of fruit flies. I think it's a huge bother. So that is one of the things that I'm kind of um, weighing out when I think about breeding these. I do want to start a breeding project, but there's just a couple of factors that I'm not 100% sure on just yet. This is the underdog in any scenario, but I think you guys should definitely go out and get one. They make awesome pets and they're super fascinating creatures. Now, when it comes to molting, you typically do need a larger kind of cork bark for the hide. 
I have to upgrade this. This is just what I had on hand. I don't plan on keeping it like this very long because when they molt, they actually hang on to cork bark or tree bark like they would in the wild, kind of like uh, she is right now, and they'll hold on. And when they're molting, they'll kind of let gravity slowly pull their body out of their old exoskeleton. So you're gonna need that room, you know, maybe a little bit higher just to give it that room from the top of the cork bark to the substrate.